Playoff hopes ride tonight for the home team, the Mesa Verde Mavericks, as they take on the Dixon Rams in this final game of the regular season here in the Sac Joaquin section live from San Juan High School. Jeff Kurtz alongside Jason Patterson. Good evening and welcome, everybody, as we get set for the final game of this regular season and a big one here for the home team Mavericks with a 3-6 and six record led by head coach Ronald Barney taking on Dixon, who is destined for the playoffs with a record of 8-1 and one, led by head coach... Wes Besagini and Jason, as we look to the start of the game today, these two teams, very similar in style, like to run the football. It should be a ground game galore here tonight at San Juan High School. Yeah, most definitely. Both teams are uh, constant running the ball, so we're going to see a lot of running. Uh, should have the clock moving constantly in this game, keeping it exciting. Both have uh, star running backs in the backfield, one coming off an injury, so we're going to see how he's doing. Uh, Definitely going to be an interesting game. Uh, hopefully the Mavericks can pull one out and make their way to the playoffs. Dixon will be going right to left here on PlayOnSports.com. They're in the white jerseys, black pants, the Rams. Helmet, as you would see, for the St. Louis Rams. Different colors, though. We are underway. Mesa Verde in the home green and orange going left to right. And on the kick return, out across the 25-yard line, Mesa Verde will start first down and 10. And we'll get our first look at the Mavericks offense, led by quarterback Kyle Worthington in his senior year. And starting tailback tonight, Tyler Hansen. You mentioned Christian Garcia coming off that injury. He will see some playing time tonight for the Mavericks, leading the team in rushing this year. But Tyler Hansen had a very good game last week in his first start at tailback, and he's in there tonight at a full 125 pounds. He is a slight back in the backfield, but difficult to bring down and gets the carry on first down right into the pile. No gain, and second down coming up. Yeah, that's exactly what Dixon's defense wants to do. They want to meet the ball carrier as soon as they get, as soon as he gets the ball and take him down for minimal gains. Uh, exactly what Dixon's defense want to do on the first play of the game. Stop that explosive running game of Mesa Verde. Jason, your keys to tonight's ball game. Uh, obviously, for both defenses, stop the star rushers in the backfield. And uh, if I'm an offense, just keep the, giving the ball to our runners and let them keep doing what they do best and what they've done all year long. Hanson lost a yard on first down, now back at the 26-yard line. Worthington going to drop back, roll out slightly right on second down and 11, throwing down the field into coverage, intercepted, picked off by the Rams. First turnover of the game, the grab made by Corey Hall, and Dixon's got the football inside the 40-yard line, first down and 10 Rams. Yeah, that's number 44, Corey Hall, for the Dixon High Rams. That is their star running back, and obviously he can do it all. He's out there getting the pickoff on the first or second play from scrimmage, so uh, let's see what he can do now here on offense, obviously showing he can do it on defense as well. The ball at the 35-yard line, Rams on first down. Hand off right-hand side, nice running room. In fact, not even touch. 15 yards down the field and more heading into the end zone. Touchdown. Dixon on the board first. One play, 35 yards out, and the Rams strike first. Yeah, that was Nick Bonovich on the carry, number 42 for the Rams. What an awesome run. He got through the middle. Uh, he was able to make a couple people miss and then turned on those jets and was able to pick up six. So Dixon strikes uh, first on this on this game, leading 6 nothing, pending this extra point. But uh, coming out dominant already with that running game, just like we uh, talked about at the start of this game. Well, Bonovich wasn't even touched the entire run. He was 15 yards down the field. Great blocking by the offensive line. This is a very prolific rushing game for the Dixon Rams as the extra point try is no good off the foot of Kyle Riley. So it will remain 6 nothing on the miss, mixed extra point, but we are going to stay right here, folks, here on PlayOnSports.com and give you a few more keys to the game. Talking to Coach Ron Barney before the game for Mesa Verde, he said offensive line play is going to be key for us. One thing he didn't mention, though, is turnovers, and here we're just a minute into the football game, Jason. One turnover, Dixon able to capitalize immediately, one play, 35 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, with the explosive offense that the Dixon Rams have, uh, you definitely don't want to give a turnover this early in the game. But nonetheless, it is still early in the game, 11 minutes to go in the first quarter, so Mesa Verde could just shake that one off and hopefully go down and get points and uh, keep right in this game. You know, and on that pass by Worthington, he had a receiver open, just threw it a little bit behind him, and it was a great defensive play by Corey Hall stepping in front for the INT. Yeah, I'd almost like to call that a, somewhat of a coverage interception because he, he didn't have too many people open. He ended up finding the one guy open late and uh, just wasn't able to make the catch and threw it a little bit behind him. Uh, still a good play by the defense for the Rams. Riley set to kick off. One deep just inside the five-yard line for Mesa Verde. 
Riley puts it in the air. This is returnable from just inside the 10, across the 20. Nice return, 25, bouncing the outside, and then stopped. Nice tackle on the open field. Nix James with the hit. Ravia on the return. Good field position for Mesa Verde. They're going to start out with the ball at the 27, maybe the 28-yard line is the... Yard marker is a little bit difficult to discern here on this San Juan field that has seen plenty of use over the course of the fall sports season. Yeah, no, uh, no off days for this on Friday nights for this field. One of those few fields now at the high school level that still has grass as everyone's converting to turf as here a first down carry. The fullback out to the 30-yard line gain of two, maybe three on the play. Yeah, that's a good defense by the Rams yet again. Uh, obviously watching their tape, knowing that Mesa Verde likes to run the ball, uh, coming from the same section in league. Uh, obviously they played each other a couple times, so knowing their offense, uh, Dixon is coming out here prepared to stop the run and so far has been doing pretty well at it. Jess Roberts gets two on a first down carry, second down and eight. 10-25 and counting opening quarter. Worthington toss sweep right. Hansen with a lead blocker trying to get to the corner and to get to the edge. He's got a cut up field. And get a good gain. We're going to set up a third and five, maybe six. Tackle bay by number 21, Blake Fulgham for the Rams. Falls out to the 33-yard line. Third and five after a gain of three. We'll see if Worthington takes to the air. He's got two receivers to the far side. Tight end right. Split backfield behind him, tight formation. Sprint out left, now he's gonna roll right. He's got an opening if he wants to take it. He's gonna run with it, extend for the first down. I think he got it. Great effort by Worthington, gets the first down. Yeah, you always like to see that from your quarterback looking downfield, not seeing anybody open. Decides to pull the ball down and uh, gain the yards needed for the first down. Good play by Worthington, nice first down for the Mesa Verde. He needed to get to the 38, he got to the 39. First down and 10, Mesa Verde on the march, their first first down of this game on their second possession. Strong side left, handoff the fullback up the middle. Nice carry by Roberts, who is a big load at 240 pounds as he takes the ball to the 45 yard line, a gain of six. He is bigger than most of the offensive linemen blocking for him for the Mavericks. Yeah, and at 5'10", that is a big load to take down, low to the ground and a heavy boy, so playing that fullback position well and rummaging through that middle there for a nice chunk of uh, yards. That's a good bit of thunder and lightning when you've got Hanson running the ball to the edge and Roberts plowing between the tackles. This is Hanson on a toss sweep left, trying to get to the corner, a stiff arm and coming up nice play on the from the corner on the far side of the field. It might have been Riley. Meanwhile, there's a penalty marker in the secondary. Loss of one, maybe two on the play for Hanson. And we await the call from our officials. First penalty of the game, clock stopping with 8.44 remaining opening quarter. We got a face mask against Dixon. And that should be enough for another Mesa Verde first down, Jason. Yeah, we got Tyler Hansen out here, the senior, who's uh, coming in to back up the star running back, Garcia, who's a junior. So this senior's out here trying to take the time that he can on the field and uh, do the best with it. And last game, he rushed for 145 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. So coming in and filling the shoes nicely is Hansen. That's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. So now, Mesa Verde in Dixon territory for the first time in the game. We get our first look at Chris Garcia, who is hustling down the field, a big gain. Nice to see that young man back in uniform for the Mavericks and immediately makes his presence felt. Another first down for Mesa Verde. Yeah, definitely not showing any signs of the injury on that play. He put his head down, drove for a couple extra yards. Uh, it's a good sign. He, he did a nice run, and he ran right back to the huddle. That's always a good sign coming off an injury. 21 yards on the carry. First down and 10, Mesa Verde. The ball at the 25-yard line of the Rams, who are leading at 6 nothing. Split backfield, handoff, Roberts looking for running room left. Not a lot there. Good job by Dixon stacking him up. Roberts is going to get a yard, perhaps. Yeah, one thing I've noticed early in this game, that any time uh, the Mavericks try to run the ball to the left, that the Rams are real quick to get to the ball and bring them down for minimal gains. So maybe one thing they're going to have to figure out early is uh, do not test the Rams on the left side of their defense. Why not run at them to the right, where they've had success so far in this game? Nico Bedoya involved in the tackle for Dixon. Nice drive, though, by Mesa Verde. Second down and nine. A receiver splitting out to the far side for the Mavericks. 
One to the near side. Here's a handoff. Garcia looking for running room around the right-hand side. Breaks one tackle, won't break a second. He is inside the 20, down around the 17-yard line, short of a first down. Third and short coming up. Third and a long two. The ball just between the 17 and 18-yard line. In the red zone for the first time in the game are the Mavericks with 7.24 and counting opening quarter. Two receivers near side for Mesa Verde split backfield. The give is to Roberts, short yardage back, gets short yardage plus more inside the 10 and stopped at the six yard line. No, gets to the five, first and goal. What a play there, uh, looking like Jerome Bettis being the bus right through the middle there, constantly moving his feet. A good play there by the Mavericks, getting a first down, uh, bringing up a first and goal. So the Mavericks trying to come back and answer after the first early turnover on the first drive. And so far looking real good on their second possession of this game. This is a fantastic response by Mesa Verde. It'd be very easy to get down after you throw the interception and your opponent scores one play later on a 35-yard touchdown run where your back isn't even touched. Toss sweep left side, Garcia, Garcia looking for running room. He's going to be stopped at the one-yard line, a gain of four. Second down and goal. Yeah, Garcia looks to be happy to be back out on the field coming off that injury. Uh, he's definitely running back to the huddle after every play. He's excited to be back on the field. And so far it's showing he's doing pretty good, averaging about three to four yards a carry. So looking good as Garcia early in this game. He looks like he has fresh legs after a couple weeks off. A receiver to either side, tight end. Right, here is the handoff. Garcia looking for running room left. He's into the end zone, touchdown. Mesa Verde on the board. Yeah, way to go, Mavericks. They answered back after their early turnover. Uh, you, you see some teams, uh, they come out there with their heads down after a turnover. They came out heads up, ready to put points back on the board, showing they're ready to uh, be a playoff team, and they came out here to prove it tonight. Well, that was a great answer on the part of Mesa Verde. You are absolutely right, Jason. It'd be really easy to get down early, but a couple of first downs really boosted the confidence of this team as Johnson on for the extra point try. Out of the hold of Harjo Sidhu, and this kick is good, and Mesa Verde has got themselves a lead. Seven to six, our score. 6-16 remaining in the first quarter of play. You're following the action on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you are enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Mesa Verde came into today's game trailing Dixon in the Golden Empire League by one game. Dixon walks in with a 3-1 and one record in league. Their one loss to Capital Christian. Their one loss all year. Mesa Verde, 2-2, two 3-6 and two, three and six overall. A win today, they'll finish at 3-2, and two, as will Dixon. Dixon with a record, if they were to lose this game, finishing at 8-2. and two. They're in the playoffs either way. Mesa Verde, though, as we've alluded to a few times now, fighting for their playoff lives. Meanwhile, Garcia, that was his ninth touchdown on the year. Johnson set to kick off. And Dixon is going to start from their own end, presumably... Their kick return team waiting at around the 12-yard line. This ball is a low-line drive returnable from the 11. Across the 20, 25, 30, and stopped right at the 30-yard line. That is where Dixon will start out with the football. Yeah, that was a nice return for the Rams. They were able to get the ball about across the 30, it looks like. It's kind of hard to see out here without the numbers painted on the field, but nonetheless, a good return by the Rams. He, ended, he had a couple holes in the middle, ended up running into one of his own players, but still a good pickup, a uh, good starting field All position for the Rams. About the 34-yard line for the Rams. Ball at the 34. That was a return of 22 yards by Jose Duran on first down. Handoff running left. That's and a short gain on the play by Corey Hall. All out to the 36-yard line, a pickup of two. I know I already mentioned the name Jerome Bettis, but let's uh, go ahead and bring <laughs> that back up. Corey Hall, number 44, a senior for the Rams, listed at 5'10", 230 pounds. So low to the ground and a big boy, and he's got lots of yards on the year. So he's already rushed for over 900 yards on the year. He's got the carry again, close to the 40-yard line. Might have gotten to the 40. 
So not only to go with the 900 yards, he already has 17 rushing touchdowns. I had to bring up that stat. 17 rushing touchdowns in one year for Corey Hall. Well, you know who the go-to guy is inside the 10-yard line for Dixon. Definitely. At 230 pounds, uh, I'd give him the ball. Goal line stance, no problem. Third down and four after two carries by Hall. And that's six yards. Here is a receiver end around, excuse me. H-back end around to the near side. Nice job stringing it out by Mesa Verde. This is going to be close. That was Chris Rico on the carry there for Dixon. Rico is close to a first down. And our officials are giving it the old eagle eye. Nope, fourth down. Fourth down and maybe a half a yard. But, boy, when you've got kids like Rico and Hall you can give the ball to, you got to think this is going to be fourth and go for it if you're Dixon. Yeah, I agree. I'm looking at here at the roster and there's – not too many six feet players on the, the Dixon Rams, so they stay low to the ground and keep it moving. QB sneak right here, and this will be enough for a first down, and more breaking out of the pile. Nolan Williams down the far side to the 20, the 10, and that's where he's brought down. What a play there. Williams was just going for the QB sneak at about six inches, and he ends up with a huge gain. First down at the 10 yard line of Mesa Verde. Yeah, that's definitely a positive of going into a big rugby scrum like that. Uh, the defensive players don't exactly know who to tackle. They try to tackle anybody with a white jersey, and they happen to pick everybody but the guy with the ball, and uh, Williams got out there and took it for a big gain. Nolan Williams, huge play. He's going to roll out, looking into the end zone. Does he complete the drive? He does. Touchdown in the back corner, Chad Baptiste. Yeah. Nolan Williams... A big run and then a 10-yard touchdown pass to finish that drive off. And now you got to anticipate Jason Dixon's going to go for two. Yeah, very nice play by Williams. He got the rushing yards, uh, adding to his already 441 on the season and, uh, and capped it off with his seventh touchdown of the year. So good play by Williams. Overall, great drive by number one. Williams has got his team on for the two-point conversion. After the missed extra point the first time around, here is a handoff Hall running left, and he's going to be stopped short. Nice defense right there by Mesa Verde, shutting that one down. Josh Merritt looked like he got his helmet in there and made the hit. And Merritt is giving up about 100 pounds making that tackle. 4.15 left, first quarter of play. Dixon, a response of their own. They march all the way down the football field, a 66-yard drive. They lead at 12 Seven with 4.15 remaining opening quarter. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and in information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Well, an impressive drive by Dixon. They don't waste any time. And really, that huge fourth down conversion, fourth and six inches, turns into a big gain of 50 yards. And Dixon scores one play later. Riley set to kick off for the Rams. Riley puts the ball in the air. This is going to be returnable from the five-yard line. Across the 10, 15, and slipping down, trying to cut at the 20-yard line. Unfortunate right there. A lot of running room available for Mesa Verde's Ray Villa, but the cleats don't hold. And so the Mavericks have a long field in front of them starting at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. Yeah, that was one thing I noticed, Jeff, out here watching the JV game is a lot of kids are slipping and sliding. Uh, that was one thing that you mentioned earlier, that this is a natural grass field here at San Juan High School. So nonetheless, it's starting to show here with the moisture getting in the air and those cleats not sticking and kids are starting to slide around. So It's actually fairly warm out for a November evening in Sacramento. Here's a toss sweep right-hand side. Garcia's got a blocker looking for running room, being patient, but he's going to be cut down at the line of scrimmage. No gain. But a little bit of haze and fog has started to drift into the valley just a touch after the sun went down and so that is what you're alluding to Jason a little bit of that moisture out on the field second down in 10 after no gain on a first down carry bar Garcia offset eye left tight end left as well handoff going left Garcia is going to get across the 20 to the 21 yard line third down and nine coming up
Well, it would seem to be an, often, uh, an obvious passing situation right here, Jason, but that is not something that neither squad likes to do all that much. No gain in the fight. It's third and ten. Yeah, I, I have the stats here. Mesa Verde has attempted about 70 passes the entire year. So Worthington's going to avoid a sack in the backfield, but he's going to run out of time and room. He's going to be cut down at the 17-yard line, a loss of four. And that'll bring up fourth down. The punting unit's going to come on for Mesa Verde. Nice coverage downfield by the Rams. Yeah, it was definitely a coverage sack by the Rams there. But a nice play by Worthington. I, I enjoyed the effort. He was definitely not going to go down without a, a hard-fought fight there. So good play by Worthington, even though he had to take the sack. Uh, overall, great play by the Rams and bring up this fourth down. Punting unit is on. Chris Rico back to receive for the Rams. Rico standing at midfield. The snap is a good one. And the kick is almost blocked. Nice high kick, short kick. It's going to take a Maverick bounce and then roll dead at Mesa Verde's 43-yard line. So Dixon will take over on the Maverick side of the field. Johnson did a nice job just avoiding the block kick attempt. Yeah, that was definitely almost blocked by number one, Nolan Williams. So not only is he out there being a quarterback and picking up big yards on fourth and short, he's out there trying to block the kick and give himself awesome field position. So the kid's out there doing it all. Well, I think Johnson had to shorten up his stride a little bit to get that kick away. And while it was a high kick, not a lot of distance. Here is the first down carry. Hall's got it, dodges a tackler in the backfield and then plows forward for a good gain of about four yards on first down. Yeah, all of that going in the YAC car or category because that was all yards after contact. He made a, a, a defensive guy miss in the backfield with a nice stiff arm and, and was able to pick up the nice four or five yard gain. So good play by Hall. Second down and six, the ball at the 39 yard line under a minute 50 now remaining in the first quarter. Here's a handoff, Rico running to the near side, trying to get around the corner and does. We got a penalty marker down in the vicinity of where you get a holding call. Rico tackled a yard short of the first down. And that will be a hold against Dixon. That's their second penalty of the game now for 25 yards. There's a penalty. Between Rico and Hall, they have a couple big boys who are constantly running the ball. So it's kind of hard when uh, you have not, not a whole lot of size on the Mesa Verde defense trying to take down a couple big boys running the ball. Yeah, Rico was a late add to the roster for this game, but he doesn't look that much smaller than Hall, who goes 230 pounds. Uh, I have Chris Rico listed oh, here as a senior, 5'9", 215 pounds. A, a roster, or excuse me, a number change. You went from 36 to 81 for this particular game. Here's a handoff running right on second down. Nick Bonovich, who scored the first touchdown of the game, but he is cut down in the backfield. Loss of one. Nice defensive play by Mesa Verde. Yeah, nice play by the Mavericks. They were able to meet the ball carrier, take him down for uh, a loss of one yard. So good play on the second down. Brings up a third and 16 for the Rams. Uh, Mesa Verde trying to get a stop here and get the ball back in their offense's hands. So between Rico and Hall, you're looking at 445 pounds of back. Here is a handoff. Rico now running to the left, gets around the corner. He's got some room, and he keeps his feet. Has the first down and more down the sideline. Inside the 10, down to the 6. And there's that big hunk of back you were just talking about. He kept those feet moving, and it was hard to take him down. I want to point out a block, though, by number one, Nolan Williams. He was able to spring, uh, spring his his ball carrier for a couple extra yards. That's the quarterback out there making a block on the outside. Very nice play. I like the hustle. I like the heart by the Dixon Rams. That play started out with a handoff to Bonovich, who, to, who headed left, picked up the block from Williams, who's almost had a special teams play. He's thrown a touchdown pass. He's had a big carry for 50 yards. He drove the team bus here as well. He's doing a little bit of everything right now for the Rams. Bonovich to the right-hand side. Inside the five in the end zone. Dixon on the board again. 33 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and Dixon with another score. They're now on top, 18-7, to and we'll see if they're going to go for two here again. That was a nice run by Bonovich. He was able to get it in the middle, uh, make a couple people miss with the hand tackles. They weren't able to bring him down, and he got in there to the end zone to make it 16-7, to pending an extra point here. Uh, 33 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Rams are leading the Mesa Verde Mavericks here at San Juan High School. Riley is going to attempt the extra point. The kick, plenty of leg on this one, and this kick is good. 
Successful on the conversion attempt for the first time of 13 to seven, the score, Dixon leading it right here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Playonsports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of hype events in all sports from across the country. Playonsports.com, high school sports lives here. Jeff Kurtz alongside Jason Patterson, Wilma Combs, our producer today. Timothy King providing all the video for you. Happy you're joining us here. As we complete the regular season in the SAC, Joaquin Sweet folks invite you to join us for our playoff preview show live from SAC Joaquin section headquarters in Lodi, California. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. you will be able to find out who's playing where and against what opponent. And in divisions one through six, we will unveil the brackets for the section headquarters tomorrow, 4 p.m right here on playonsports.com. Riley set to kick. His team leading 19 to seven, 33 seconds left in the first quarter. Riley, a squib kick along the ground is gonna be grabbed by an up man. Roberts up the middle is gonna take it out to the 44 yard line, about 17 yards. Yeah, you definitely like to see that from your special teams. They, the, they try to squib kick it and you had an up man pick it up, take it for a nice gain and with a solid field position here to start their third drive of this game. Looks like Austin Andrade is coming off the field. We'll keep an eye on that for Mesa Verde after the special team's return by the Mavericks and Roberts in particular. And he's going to get the carry on first down across the 45 to the 46 yard line, a gain of two before he is tackled by Roman Ortiz. He's colliding, Ortiz goes 270 pounds. Yeah, I heard that from all the way up here in the press box. You heard there, the, them collide there. A uh, gain of only one yard. Good play by the defense, and I think that might do it unless uh, the Mavericks can get a hike off within the next one second. Yeah, I think Mesa Verde's going to be content to let the quarter run out. The first 12 minutes are in the books. Dixon, a couple of and a pass from quarterback Nolan Williams to Baptiste, the receiver in the end zone, has given them their 19 points. A one-yard touchdown run by Christian Garcia is Dixon's answer. 19-7 to the score after the first quarter of play. And, Jason, what are you seeing so far out on the field? What do you like so far from what Dixon is doing? What do you see from Mesa Verde? With Dixon, is their, their, uh, their short time it takes them to score. They're quick. They're, 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 just, they're, they're just staggering. They're out there. They're at constant... You really can't give them the ball. They can score at any moment, at any time. Mesa Verde is still hanging in there, playing not too bad. Uh, definitely not what the scoreboard is already showing, down 12 points. So the Mavericks, they just got to keep up with that defense and keep the ball in their offense's hands, and eventually I think their offense will put some points on this board. Bonovich with those two touchdowns for Dixon now has nine on the year. Mesa Verde now going right to left. Second down and nine as we start the second quarter of play. The Mavericks in those green shots. On first down, carry right-hand side, Garcia, or excuse me, second down. Garcia is going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. And so the running game, which was working pretty well on the Mavericks' second possession, has been shut down on their last couple of possessions here as they've got a third down and long coming up. Yeah, it's starting to look like the Dixon uh, Rams are starting to gain a little momentum, defensive play. Uh, it's definitely a big third down here for the Mavericks. Two receivers to the near side for Worthington. Split backfield, tight end right. Worthington's going to sprint out slightly left. Pocket collapsing. He's going to throw the ball. He's got a man open on a fade, but unable to pull it in. On the near side is Harjo Sidhu. Oh, that was a good-looking play and a nice fade route thrown by Worthington, but Sidhu couldn't pull it in. Yeah, that was a very nice throw by Worthington. He led his receiver nice, threw it right in the area where nobody. Uh, unfortunately, Sadu was unable to get uh, enough steps to get his hands out there and get the ball. So that will bring up a fourth down and the punting unit for the Mavericks. Looks like the Mavericks are thinking they're missing somebody. One of the linemen. Actually, they're missing somebody else. They may have to call a timeout here. Boy, you hate to see that on special teams, though not the end of the world from your own 46-yard line. Rico back to receive Johnson's. The snap, once again, a good one. Johnson gets this one away. Nobody really had a play on him. Rico's going to let it bounce. He's going to let it roll. It's going to take a Maverick roll down to the 
20 yard line. So that is where Dixon will take over with a long field in front of them, but they have scored the last two times they've had the ball after a turnover on and 11.06 left in the first half of play. Dixon looking for more. Yeah, if I'm the Mavericks here, I'm going to need a three and out and try to get the ball back in my offense. Try to get some points on this board. Toss sweep left side. This is Hall with a head of steam. That's a dangerous combination of words, and he's going to get a first down out to the 13-yard line. That, the sight of Hall coming around the edge makes cornerbacks quake. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to reference because he really does look like Jerome Bettis out there. You put him in, a, in yellow and black, and I swear we'd be watching a Steelers game. 15 yards on the carry. A first down out to the 35-yard line of the Rams. Hall remains in the game. Rico lines up right. Bonovich in motion. He's going to take the snap and the pitch to the right-hand side. Trying to get to the corner. Nice job and run support right there by the defense of Mesa Verde. Jared Cox gets in there and makes the initial hit. Yeah, the Mavericks, they were able to swarm the ball carrier. They weren't fooled by the uh, little bit of trickery there on the, the sweep to the uh, motion man. So good play by the Mavericks, met the ball carrier. We got a second and nine. Exactly what the Mavericks wanted to do, giving up such a big run on first down. So they got to buckle down and try to get their, their defense off the field. Well, for the corners with Bonovich coming around the edge, it's like, ah, somebody finally my size, I can tackle. And on second down and nine, handoff to the left. This is going to be the kicker, who's also running a little bit. Kyle Riley, the junior, gets another yard. It'll be up third down. 9.54 and counting, first half. Yeah, it's only the 14th carry for Riley on the season. He does come into this game with 80 yards and a touchdown, though. One back in the backfield. Rico on the play action. Here's Williams looking to throw. He has a man in the flat. That's Riley, who's going to get upended close to a first down. We'll see if he's got it. Looked like he was going to be a little shy, but where they're likely to go for it here at their own 44-yard line. Fourth down and officially a yard, but again, Jason, a more like six inches. Yeah, we know what happened last time they got this close to a first down. Yep, Williams took it 50 yards just trying to get a quarterback sneak. Came out of a pile, and he's going to try it again. This time he's not going to get 50, but he is going to get the first down to the 46-yard line. So that will move the chains here for the Rams. Exactly what the Rams want to do here with 8 minutes, 59 seconds to go in the first half. Uh, constantly oh, that clock that moving, going to halftime with this lead of 19-7. to seven. Well, with both teams running the football very effectively, that does keep the clock moving throughout the entire game. Here's a handoff right side. Riley is going to slip, lose his footing. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Back to the 45. Actually, are they going to say even further back? Yeah, back to the 43-yard line. So the knee down there. And I can't recall Dixon being in a second and double digits situation in this entire first half. This is the first time they've got a second and something longer than nine yards. Yeah, I agree on that one. This has just been explosive. Here's an inside handoff. Rico, he's got a big hole. He's going to make up the deficit plus down the far sideline to the 20 to the 10, and he'll be tackled right there. First down and goal for the Rams. Rico, a huge run. Yeah, what a run by Rico. He was able to get to the outside, and I want to point out the blocking by number 10, Jet, or excuse me, Chad Baptiste. He was out there. He uh, had a couple blocks. He was able to give him at least an extra 20 to, or 15 to 20 yards on that run. So that, that goes to show you guys out there, those wide receivers not only out there to catch the ball, but to lay some blocks on the running game. Nice blocking by Baptiste. Looks like the ball is going to be spotted at the elk. Got movement on the part of the Dixon offensive line. and So a first down, it looks like the first down is going to be at the one. So five yards back will put Dixon a first down and 15 situation at the Mesa Verde 16. But the Mavericks right now need a big time stop, Jason, in the red zone. Yeah, I agree. You definitely don't want to give up another touchdown here. Here is a ball. I don't know. That looked like a snap that was fumbled, and it looks like it went right through Williams' hands. It goes instead to Nick Bonovich, who falls on the ball, and 
gets back to the line of scrimmage. It no almost gain. it almost looked like a, a, a bumble direct snap. Yeah, it, that kind of looked weird. It went right past Williams. Didn't even look like it was intended for him. We actually had a highlight from Kansas on the Play on Sports Network that made it onto Sports Center, where there was a snap that went off the center's or caught it and ran it 80 yards for a touchdown. We almost had the same situation there. Here's a handoff to oh. Hall, who is upended. Close to the original line of scrimmage, and it'll be third down and 11. That was a shotgun situation in that game in Kansas, Jason. The ball went right off the center's rump, flew up into the air. The linebacker grabbed it. First time anybody's enter intercepted a snap and returned it 80 yards for a score, at least to my recollection. Yeah, that's definitely a highlight reel right there. You can check that out on our YouTube page, folks. YouTube.com slash play on network as we get our first time out of the game. Dixon's going to call one right here with 641 remaining in the half. They're looking at a third down and 10 at the 11 yard line. They're leading it 19 to 7 over Mesa Verde. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the play on sports school broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Well, Dixon has a lot of options right here, Jason. Who do you go to? Rico has been effective running the ball. So is Hall up the middle. Bonovich to the outside. Certainly a lot of choices for head coach Wes Besagini. Yeah, definitely uh, too many choices. Uh, every single one of them, Hall, Bonovich, and Rico, all have had success running the ball. So um, I definitely am going to expect one of those three guys to be seeing this ball here on a third and ten. Of course, Dixon surprised us before actually going to the pass. Williams hitting Baptiste on a ten-yard touchdown pass for their second score of the game. So we will see here. Out of the timeout, Dixon now two remaining. Mesa Verde has all three of theirs. 6.41 left in the half. Third down and ten. Split backfield, Bonovich back there with Hall. Rico in motion, back to pass Williams. He's got time, he's running out of time. He steps away from three tacklers, but he's Williams. not going to step away from the rest of the Mesa Verde defense as he is tackled well short of a first down. And this will likely be field goal time for Kyle Riley, who certainly has the leg for it. I don't know, they're, they're calling it back off. No, nope, just getting the play in is yep. Riley. Nonetheless, and great play by the Mavericks. They were able to get get that third down stop and bring up this field goal try. Looks like it's going to be from about the eight yard line. This will be a 25 yard attempt from the left hash out of the hold of the quarterback Williams. And now we've got a whistle and a penalty marker, dead ball offside. Against Mesa Verde, that's not going to give Dixon the first down, but it is going to take a fourth and seven into about a fourth and two, and now maybe you change things around and go for it if you're Dixon. And that's exactly what's going to happen right here. It looks like Dixon's going to go for it. Will not attempt the field goal. So fourth down and about three at the four-yard line. Williams fumbles the snap, just gives it to his running back, going for the end zone. Hall is in, touchdown. Wow. What a play by Corey Hall. He was uh, he took a page right out of Spike from the Little Giants movies book out of that one. He was dragging those kids along. He had at least two guys on his back, kept those feet moving, and got across the goal line for six points. Great play by Corey Hall. So that offside penalty is huge because... It still would have been a two-possession game if they, if Riley hits the field goal. It would have been 22 to seven instead with a touchdown. Now the extra point try by Riley. This is a three-possession game, and that kick is good. 26 to seven is our score, and that is a big, big penalty because Dixon was not going to go for it. And then on top of that, Williams a fantastic play, Jason, because he almost fumbled the snap just managed to dive and give the ball to Hall for the touchdown. Yeah, great play by Williams. He definitely was able to handle that uh, bad snap, got the ball into Corey, Will Corey Hall's hands, and uh, he was able to get across the goal line for the points. So good play by the Rams. Unfortunate event for the Mavericks is that offsides play uh, took away their field goal and pretty much gave them a touchdown. 
But nonetheless, five minutes, 44 seconds to go in the first half. Uh, if I'm the Mavericks, I want to come down and put some points on the board before halftime. I do not want to go in at halftime with only one touchdown trailing by, by so many points. Especially with Dixon set to get the ball to begin the second half of play. Yeah, that's yeah. That you definitely want to go down and score. Use all five minutes, 44 seconds that you need, and go down there and put some points on the board. Because 14-26 sounds a whole lot better than 26-7 at halftime. Riley set to kick. Dixon trying to debate how many players they actually have on the field. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. They were down one, and our late arrival is in the ball game. Riley is going to kick this one on the ground. That's a live football right there, and falling on it, and losing it, and then falling on it again. Nice job by Mesa Verde. They will recover with good field position as well at their own 38-yard line. Yeah, I'm a little curious as to why the Rams did a little squib kick there. Nonetheless, it's going to give the Mavericks a good field position going into possibly their last drive of the first half. So let's see if they can't go down and put some points up. Uh, much needed points here for the Mavericks is definitely what they're going for. Max Bailey, good recognition falling on that football, realizing it was a live ball after 10 yards. Here's Worthington, toss sweep first down left side. This is Garcia, who's going to be hit from the back side and dropped. Nice job by the Dixon defensive line, which is right now winning the battle in the trenches against Mesa Verde's offensive front. Yeah, a tackle led by Val Lilo. Number 77 for the Dixon Rams. That's a big boy out there. 6'1", 275 pounds. Loss of one on the play on the Garcia carries. Second down and 11. Worthington with a split backfield. Tight end right. Handoff. This is Roberts. Strength against strength. Roberts moving the pile. And he's going to get two yards. And bring up third down. And, well, it might have gotten three. They've one, got one official spotting at the 40. The other at the 39. So we will see. Meanwhile, we've got an injured player down on the field. Boy, you hope that isn't Roberts at the end of that play. That would be a huge loss for Mesa Verde. But I did not catch the number. Jason, did you happen to see? No, I did see the ref take the ball out of his hand, so it could have been oh, the ball carrier. That's not a good sign. If that was just Roberts, he's been the one consistent force between the tackles for Mesa Verde in this football game. 4.56 remaining in the half. Mesa Verde facing a third down. Coming up here, looks like it's going to be third and eight from the 40-yard line. But in the meantime, here on senior night at Mesa Verde High School, or excuse me, not at Mesa Verde High School, MacArthur Field San Juan High School, but the home field for the Mesa Verde Mavericks. We had a great ceremony before the game. Not only did Mesa Verde honor their seniors, and parents who were escorting their seniors, but also the senior cheerleaders as well, who don't get as much PR, at least from the broadcast booth, but are certainly out there supporting the team and work very hard going through summer camps and everything into the going into the uh, regular season as well. As that is Roberts, who is being helped off the field by the training staff for the Mavericks. He's actually walking off on his own, so that's always a good sign when he's not uh, having to be carried off and he can walk off on his own. So definitely a good sign. Hopefully we see uh, 41 back in there. Replacing him will be Bobby Jones. Well, Roberts appears to be okay at least, but they're going to take a look at him. He has to be out for at least one play. And a pistol formation for Worthington here with one back in the backfield. Three receivers in the pattern, two to the near side. Here comes the pressure. Worthington steps up. He's got some running room if he wants it. If he can make a move here, he can get the first down. He did it before. He is going to be very close. Got to love the effort by the senior quarterback for the Mavericks. He is going to be just shy. But, boy, if I'm Ron Barney, I might roll the dice here and go for it on fourth down and half a yard, especially by, after the effort by your quarterback. Maybe yeah. use a timeout here and talk it over, but definitely go for it. Yeah, I agree. Worthington has uh, proved already throughout this entire game that he's got the Michael Vick-like attributes in the backfield, making people miss. Uh, he was able to get out to the outside there, get a good enough gain to, to make Bar Coach Barney want to go for it here. Big play right here for the Mavericks. Here's the carry. Garcia is not going to get there. Swarmed under by the defensive line. That is where... Uh, 
Roberts perhaps being in the game might have been able to pick up the yard they needed. Instead, Garcia is stopped short and the Rams will take over with 3.46 remaining in the half and two timeouts to work with. The ball is in Mesa Verde territory. Yeah, the Mavericks happen to run right into that big Dixon Ram defensive line led by Val Lilo, the senior. Uh, definitely good play by the Rams. They were able to get that ball carrier down for a loss of yards and back into the hands of their offense. So keeping momentum on their sides are the Rams. I like that play call, though. you got to go for it there. Here is Bonovich on first down. This looks like the play reminiscent the one he scored on in the first quarter of the game. Instead, this time, he is in touch until he gets about 15 yards down the field and he gets a first down easily. Yeah, they definitely have an explosive running game due to the Dixon Rams uh, with so many different weapons in Rico and Bonovich and Hall. So too many options to choose from, and it, sometimes it proves too much for the defense. This time it's Rico running left with Hall leading the way, and Rico's going to be cut down high and low after a two-yard gain. And once again throwing his body around is Josh Merritt. Yeah, what a play by Merritt, able to get to the outside, bring the ball carrier down. Uh, took his legs out from underneath him. It was exactly what he needed to do to bring the big boy down. Uh, they say the lower you hit the bigger man, the harder he falls. So exactly what they proved right there. Merritt is throwing his body around. He's giving up 70 to 100 pounds to these running backs. Back to pass Williams. He's going to throw into the flat near side. He's going to overshoot Hall incomplete. And it'll bring up third down and eight. And once again, another big third down for the Mesa Verde defense, trailing 26 to seven with three minutes left in the half. They need to keep Dixon off the board. Yeah, they did well on the last drive. They they brought up a field goal opportunity, but then did they uh, got got an offsides called on them, and which led to the fourth fourth down attempt and a touchdown from the Rams. So Mesa Verde has been doing pretty good on the last couple drives to stop them from scoring. Just a couple of small mistakes. Let's see if they can't get another big third down stop. Third down. Williams is going to hand off Bonovich running right. He's in the secondary. He's going to be hit and stopped. Nice combo on the tackle. Ray Villa and Jared Cox combined on the tackle, and it'll bring up fourth down. Fourth down and about four. And Dixon, let's see, I don't see Riley out on the field. They're kind of in that in-between territory. Let's see what they're going to do here. They appear to be in a punt formation. But this could turn into a fake as well. And that is what Mesa Verde's thinking, and that's what's going to happen. Rico is going to try to run. He needs to get four yards. He's going to be stopped short. Nice defense by the Mavericks special teams unit. They will take over three timeouts they have to use, Jason, in two minutes, 11 seconds left in the first half clock. Yeah, let's see that Maverick two-minute drive here. They want to go down and, like I said before, get points before halftime. Uh, nobody wants to go into halftime on the last game of the season with the playoffs at, at bay down 26-7 at halftime. So they need to get this big drive here, use that two minutes wisely with the three timeouts, put some points on the board, and go into halftime with a little bit of momentum. Worthington looking for the play call from the sideline. But he's missing a player. Garcia, Christian Garcia, late arrival. Roberts still on the bench. They're keeping an eye on him, the training staff down there for Mesa Verde on the near sideline. On first down and 10, Worthington up to the line under center, one back in the backfield, three receivers. Worthington, three-step drop. He's going to throw, pass complete, first one of the day. He's going to get four yards. Nice tackle on the outside, Blake Fulgham. Second down and six. But I like that high percentage possession pass right there for Worthington. Didn't. He hasn't been getting a lot of time in the backfield, but that one there, three-step drop, bam, four-yard gain. This time a handoff. Garcia running right, and he is cut down immediately. Might have lost a yard as well. And I'm saying his name one more time. Uh, Val Lilo in there on that tackle. A big number 77 constantly in there for the defensive line. Uh, bringing the ball carriers down. If I'm the offense, I want to run as far away from big number 77 as possible because Lilo has just been all over the ball so far in this game. He looks like he's got pretty good lateral movement as well, but there, it's been tough sledding between the tackles with Roberts out of the game right now for the Mavericks, who still have a committee in the backfield there. Five players, now two backs, two receivers near side. Tight end right, Worthington facing eight in the box, drops back to pass, and looks like he slips and falls and fumbled the football. But he recovers, and now with under a minute remaining 
in the half. Yeah, it looks like they're getting their punting unit on the field. Yeah, it is fourth down coming up. Clock stops with 57 seconds remaining. I didn't see who called the timeout. That's definitely unfortunate for the Mavericks. I was hoping to see if they could go down and get a, get a couple extra points, make this game a little bit closer going into halftime. Nonetheless, Mavericks are still holding in on this game. Their offense has been a little slow, but their defense has been playing pretty well on these last couple drives. So going into halftime, that's one positive to look up to is that your defense is playing fairly well. After giving up the 26 points, they've been buckling down and uh, not giving up too much to the Rams, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, if I'm Coach Barney, I'm in the locker room trying to get my offense moving, so that's one thing they're probably gonna work on here after these 57 seconds are up. Meanwhile, though, for Dixon, you never have gotten the sense so far in the first half that the Rams have not been in control of the game. They have, they scored early after the interception, and despite the fact that Mason Verde came back and got a touchdown immediately following that score by the Rams. Dixon scored a couple other times, including on a fourth down and goal, or excuse me, fourth down and three from the four yard line. Now the punt by Johnson, he gets it away, but this is returnable. Rico from his 41 yard line, gets a block across the 45, tries to cut back, stumbles, keeps his feet, gets into Maverick territory and take it down at the 47 yard line. 45 seconds left in the half. They do have two timeouts though, do the Rams. So I'm a little curious to see if they go for the end zone or if they don't just run the ball and take the uh, ball, take the game into halftime with the lead. So let's see what the coach will call here on first down. I'm, interestingly though, the clock stopped on that last play. Somebody must have called timeout. I got to think it was Dixon, but I never saw the signal from the officials. And I'd I'm getting a, a, a yes from our scorekeeper that Dixon did call a timeout. All so right, so they've they got one, one left. Timeout. Rico in motion, play action, back to pass, looking Williams, throwing as a man open, pass complete, Bonovich dodges one tackler, dodges two, won't dodge the third, but he will pick up the first down. The clock will stop temporarily while the chains move, 36 seconds left in the half. The ball just outside, the Mesa Verde 30 yard line, a gain of 16. And now a timeout on the field, and Dixon is going to use their final timeout. So Dixon appears to be out of timeouts, and I'm a little surprised, Jason, they're taking that one so early on this possession. But Yeah, I agree, especially with the uh, high school rules as the clock stops to reset the chains. Uh, you take that advantage, get your team to the line, and you normally you have two plays called at a time right now with so little time left on the clock. So I would have went straight to that second play, called it, used my timeout to set up my field goal unit. But nonetheless, obviously the coach has something in mind. So let's see how this plays out with 36 seconds to go in the first half. Well, Coach Bessagini must not be too concerned about his team's ability to score. Because you could think there, all right, well, let's just get the team up to the line, spike the football while we'll the second down and 10. We've been moving the ball well, and we saved the timeout. But... Dixon elects to use it, so they're now out of timeouts. They've got a first and 10 at the 31 yard line of the Mavericks. Here is a toss to Riley, who's looking to throw down the field, has some guys to choose from, and the pass is dropped. Rico cannot corral it. And second and 10, the clock stopping with 30 seconds left in the half. Yeah, Riley looked almost more disappointed than Rico did on that drop. <laughs> He said, I only get so many opportunities to throw the ball, and you're going to have to drop it. Uh, nonetheless, a good throw by Riley. He was a little bit behind Rico, but when you put it into a, a receiver's hands and they can touch the ball, they're supposed to bring it down. But uh, it's going to bring up second and 10 with 30 exactly seconds to go in the first half. Williams now out of the shotgun, puts a man in motion left to right. That's Bonovich. Play action. Williams is now going to drop back to pass, throw back far side. Pass is grabbed. This is Hall down the sideline. Stopped at the sticks around the 21. We'll see if they give him the first down. Checking into the ball game, Trevor DeWeese for Mesa Verde will come in as keeping those defensive linemen fresh, critical against this big offensive line. Clock continues to run. Now there's only five. There's only four seconds left. It's taking a long time. Two, one. They get the playoff. Williams back to pass. Last play of the half. He's throwing for the end zone. Man open! Incomplete, out of the back of the end zone, no good. Great effort 
but unable to catch that back line was Dixon, and that will end the first half of play. 26 to seven, your halftime score. Dixon leading it at the half, wow. Wow, indeed. That was very close, but that will do it. Folks, we have a 15 minute intermission. We're gonna take a short break here on playonsports.com, then come back with a playonsports.com halftime show. Again, your halftime score, Dixon 26, Mesa Verde 7, 24 minutes of football, Mesa Verde playoff hopes on the line. We'll hope you'll stay with us on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to...
Halftime continues here at San Juan High School as the Mesa Verde cheerleading squad performs here on senior night. Jeff Kurtz alongside Jason Patterson. 26-7 is your halftime score as Dixon leads it against Mesa Verde. Let's recap the scoring for you from the first half of play after an interception by Dixon on the first possession of the game by the Mavericks. A touchdown run of 35 yards by Bonovich gave Dixon a 6-0 lead as the extra point was missed. That was the first of two touchdowns rushing Nick Bonovich would have in the first half, but Mesa Verde came back with a one-yard touchdown run after a long drive. Christian Garcia punching it in. That gave Mesa Verde their only lead of the game. They led 7-6. But then on the next possession for Dixon, they drove down the field, and Nolan Williams connected with his wide receiver, Chad Baptiste, in the end zone for a 10-yard touchdown pass. The two-point conversion was no good, so Dixon held on to a 12-7 lead. And then when they got the ball back again, Bonovich, here's where he got his second score of the game. A six-yard touchdown run made it 19-7. Dixon added a four-yard touchdown run by Corey Hall on a fourth and three from the four-yard line to make it 26-7. And that was really a critical play because there was a five-yard offside, Jason, that occurred when Dixon was lining up for a field goal that would have given them a 15-point lead but would have kept it to a two-possession game and made the difference for Mesa Verde a little bit more palatable going into halftime. Instead, they're down by three scores. They haven't been able to move the ball other than that one long drive that they had. Dixon's controlling the line of scrimmage, and the Rams get the ball first to start the second half of play. With your playoff hopes on the line, the deck is certainly stacked against the Mavericks right now. Yeah, I definitely agree. Coming into this second half, they're going to have to get that stagnant offense moving. Uh, they've got seven points so far, but that, that's off of one solid drive, I'm going to point out. The one touchdown that they did get was from a really nice drive. Hopefully they can uh, take what they did on that drive and bring it back to the second half and try to get some more points on the board. Uh, Mavericks have been playing a pretty solid game on defense. Even though giving up these points, uh, they haven't done it without a nice, tough, hard, rough uh, path to get there. Sorry. Uh, Mesa Verde is definitely going to have to pump it up here at the second half. Dixon coming in with a, a nice lead and they have been just constantly moving the ball uh, those last couple drives though by Dixon were stopped by Mesa Verde's defense so Mesa Verde was starting to show a little bit of life on defense towards the end of that first half uh, they definitely didn't give up a, a touchdown there on that last play of the first half so so solid things to go uh, coming into the second half to look at it just hopefully can get that offense moving well now what was Dixon doing in that first half of play that allowed them to control this game and take a 19 point lead into the intermission. I think it's just constantly moving that ball, getting those first downs, keeping the chain game moving. Uh, anytime Mesa Verde is starting to show life, Dixon finds a way to do a big play and take that life right back out of him. So Dixon is keeping Mr. Momentum on their side and it, it seemed to be proving uh, worthwhile so far. Well, so now if you're Mesa Verde, what adjustments do you make? I mean, you had that one long drive in the first half. It was a great response after Dixon scored off the turnover. But it, it hasn't been easy for the Mavericks to recreate that. And really the defensive line for Dixon is taking control at the line of scrimmage. In particular, a name we called a number of times in the first half. You in particular, Jason, Val Lilo who's really clogging up the interior for the Rams. Yeah, he's a, he's a big boy on the defensive line. He's been constantly moving to the ball, bringing down the ball carriers nicely. Uh, if I'm the Mesa Verde Mavericks here, I want to focus on what I did on that first drive to get points, constantly trying to go back to that. They need to keep the defense off kilter and uh, try to maybe pull out a little trick plays, get something to get the momentum back on their side. Here in front of this home crowd, they want to get the crowd something to cheer about. They got a nice turnout here, so let's give them something to uh, be positive about. Well, we are covering a number of games here in the Sac Joaquin section this evening, many of which have playoff implications, if not for teams getting in, like today where Mesa Verde's trying to get in, but also for seeding, which is what Dixon's trying to solidify with a win here tonight. Los Banos and Pacheco battling to a 7-6 halftime score. Los Banos leading it. Winner of that game is certainly going to solidify their spot in the playoffs, and Pacheco trying to get in for the first time in school history. Roseville leading Wood Creek 28-21 in the second quarter. Oak Ridge over Jesuit 14-7. They're just starting the third there. And Granite Bay locked up in a tight one with Nevada Union 14-7. That's in second quarter action. So, folks, when you're done following our game here tonight, I invite you to jump over to some of those others where they should be in progress. And we'll try to keep you updated as best we can. I'd like to thank Brian Vilvin back at 
company headquarters in San Diego as he and our team down there are keeping track of all the games we're covering across the nation. And right now on the West Coast as we've got games going on in Washington, Oregon, Colorado, and in California, up and down the state from San Diego all the way up to Chico. And we're going to be giving you a lot of coverage in the northern part of the state over the next few weeks in playoff action. For football and for other sports, we've got some soccer going on in the San Francisco section tomorrow. We've got the playoff preview show here in the Sac Joaquin section on Saturday, 4 p.m. You want to find out who's playing whom in Divisions 1 through 6 in the football playoffs in the Sac Joaquin section. There is only one place you can find out first, and that is on playonsports.com. We will have that for you at 4 o'clock live from Sac Joaquin section headquarters, and then you can check back on our broadcast schedule page throughout the course of the next several weeks as we'll have different football games for you. We'll have championships in every single sport in every division, either highlights or full game coverage of soccer, water polo, girls volleyball, and, of course, football. We are definitely your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. And, Jason, as we look at the second half, and we'll wind down the halftime show, we'll see if your predictions come true. What does Dixon need to do to maintain this lead and finish with a 9-1 record? What does Mesa Verde need to do to mount this comeback trailing by 19? Uh, if I'm Dixon, uh, I just want to keep doing exactly what I've been doing, keep giving the ball to Bonovich and Hall and uh, Rico, keep them on the that three t the three person tandem is what I'm going to call it, because they're constantly moving the ball. Anytime they, those guys touch the ball, they seem to be going for positive yards. Uh, just keep giving it to them and, and waste as much time off this clock, because uh, I mean, as much as you would like to continue to score, it's not needed at the moment. So just time wasted is what Dixon needs. Uh, if I'm the Mavericks here, I need to, like I said, get that offense moving, get some points on the board, try to get Mr. Mo back on their side because they're going to need it here going into the second half. Well, we will see what Mesa Verde is able to do and if the Dixon Rams can continue their role. Folks, 26-7, to 7, your halftime score. We'll take our final break here on PlayOnSports.com. Dixon leading it. We'll be back with the second half kickoff in just a few moments. Please stay with us. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot. Teams back out on the field. Halftime festivities complete. Mesa Verde set to kick off going left to right as we return to the MacArthur Field here at San Juan High School. Mesa Verde in the home green jerseys with the orange helmets, orange pants, orange lettering. Dixon, the Rams on the road, 
trying to close out once again another strong season for this Rams squad. They are going right to left. White jerseys, Rams insignia on the helmets, black pants. The kickoff, and we are underway. Second half action. Rams returning just inside the 20-yard line. They're going to run a reverse. Bonovich heading to the near side. He gets a block. He cuts up field. He's going to be ridden out of bounds. Nice job on the razzle-dazzle, and the ball is going to be out to the 37-yard line of Dixon. That's where they'll start first and 10 with a short field. And this has been a prolific offense, especially on the ground for Dixon throughout the course of the year. And why change tonight? 26 first-half points already. Three on the ground, one through the air. Nolan Williams has doing, been, uh, been doing a good job guiding this Rams offense here tonight. Yeah, I like that call on the first uh, play of the second half, Jeff. He come, they come out, they do a nice little bit of trickery, uh, proving that even up so many points, they definitely want to continue to keep points on the board. Here on first down, Bonovich is going to be met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Nice job by Mesa Verde. Their defense is going to have to dig deep. Alex Johnson, who's handling all the kicking and punting, no now play. stepping in at defensive line and making the hit. Joined on that tackle by Ryan Alvarez, and it'll bring up second down, and the officials are going to say nine after a gain of one yard. But I would anticipate we're going to see a heavy dose of Rico and also Corey Hall in the second half. But instead we get Bonovich trying to bounce to the outside, and he's going to lose yardage. Nice job by Mesa Verde's defense coming out of the gate here. It's going to bring up third down and 10 after a loss of one, maybe two. Yeah, Mesa Verde looking uh, looking quite nice coming out of the halftime, coming out of the locker rooms. Uh, definitely two big stops already bringing up a third and 11. Uh, like we mentioned earlier in the first half, I don't think Dixon had too many third and uh, double digits to go, so... Third and 11 doing good already are the Mavericks on defense. Williams out of the shotgun, drops back, has time. He's going to throw, he's going to throw underneath, pass complete. But Mesa Verde gets there to make the tackle. So the Mavericks defense does their job here. It's bringing up a fourth down, and we're going to see the punting unit for Dixon. And you got to think, if there's a speech that Coach Barney was going to give in the locker room, given the number of seniors on this team, and it is senior night, and you're playing for a playoff spot, this could be your last game. I mean, you got to dig into your Hunter Pence school of uh, speech making here because you got to go in there and say, look, you got to play for the guy next to you. There's only 24 minutes of football left in your life, potentially, at a competitive level. You might as well lay it all out on the line, and the defense certainly responds. Here is the kick. Punt away. Returnable. The Mavericks just above their 20-yard line, cutting back to the near side, 25, 30, and out to the 35-yard line. Nice return of about 14 yards for Josh Merritt, and we'll see what the Mesa Verde offense can do. Yeah, Merritt is pumped up coming off to the sideline here. He is trying to pump up his team, and uh, so far it's proving to be good. The defense came out, did a nice three and out. Uh, probably, I, I'm almost positive the first three and out of the game for the Dixon Rams. So Mesa Verde doing exactly what they need to do here to start this second half. Nine minutes, 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Roberts still out of the game. Here's a toss sweep. Hanson on first down, trying to get around the corner, gets a block and cuts up field and gets about three yards. How much of a boost would it be for Mesa Verde's confidence if they can drive down the field and score here on the opening possession? I think that's exactly what they need to boost all all the kids' morales is to go down and get these points. Uh, so far, they got a three-yard gain on first down. That's not too bad. You want to hope for a four on a rushing play for first down, but still, three is definitely workable. Brings up a second and seven. They need to they need to realize that they only need ten yards at a time and focus on just getting first down to get the ball down the field. Here's a toss sweep to the right hand side. Garcia is looking for running room. Nice spin move. Breaks a tackle. Hangs onto the ball and gets the first down. Hard running right there. He's going to pick up eight yards and move the sticks for Mesa Verde, and they have not, the only time the Mavericks have done, had gotten first downs in this game was on their one touchdown drive, and now they've got one here. That could be a good omen for the Mavericks. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, you only need 10 every, every time. It takes three plays to get 10 yards, so that's exactly what they need to focus on, focus on getting these first downs, and you will eventually find your way in the end zone. Garcia looking for running room to the left. Gets to the outside. Gets to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. He was at the 46-yard line after that last first down run. And he's going to still be at the 46-yard line. No gain. Second down and 10. 
And again, I'm trying to keep an eye on where Jess Roberts is on the sideline, and he is still there. So he may be done for the day. So he's up and moving around. You wonder, a blow to the head, and they are really tight on that now at the high school level with the concern about concussions. Here's Worthington on the rollout. He's going to throw. He's got a man open, and he's got the completion. Hanging on to the football. What a catch. Nice job pulling that in. Sebastian Duransky with the reception, and he got drilled. Hung on to the ball, and it looked like he kissed it when he was done with it. Uh, he's definitely feeling it on the sideline. He got nailed from behind, was able to keep his hands on the ball. Great play by Duransky. Another first down, great throw by Worthington. Here's a handoff, Garcia right side, runs into a wall. Now he's going to try to spin back at a block from Worthington. Garcia's running out of room, though. He'd be wise to just fall on the ball. Instead, he is tossed down. And Garcia a little frustrated with himself that he tried to cut back but couldn't quit get to the outside. And once again, another big tackle by Lilo. Yeah, Christian Garcia looked like he might have had an opportunity to reverse field and take it downfield. But Lilo was able to get to the outside and bring the ball carrier down. Uh, Val Leo has just been unstoppable on the defensive line so far for the Dixon Rams. Second down and an acre right now for... The Mavericks, worthy to back to pass. He's going to step up and try to run. He's going to be cut down from the outside. As he stepped up in the pocket, he's going to lose a couple more yards. And now it's third down and even further. That was a nice tackle by number 81, Chris Rico, for the Rams. He was able to get out there and bring the ball carry down. That's going to bring up thir third and uh, a whole acre, as my buddy Jeff <laughs> has mentioned earlier. A lot of yards to gain here, third and 23 for Mesa Verde. Nonetheless, uh, coming after this first drive, I'm gonna if they can get some yards here, I'm going to assume they're going to go for it on fourth down. You might as well. 6.48 left in the third quarter. Out of the pistol, back to pass. Worthington, he's got time. He's throwing a fade down the sideline. He's got a man open, but it throws a little bit behind the intended target. I think that was Johnny Perales down the sideline. In coverage on the play for Dixon was Blake Fulgham. And the punting unit's going to come out for the Mavericks. So the drive stalls. At the 46-yard line of Mesa Verde. So that was uh, Garcia on the attempted reception there. The pass was intended for number 88, Garcia. Oh, excuse me. We don't have him here on our roster, so I had to use my excellent eye vision to read the, the oh, last name on the back of his jersey. Nicely here. done. <laughs> no visit for the op to the optometrist in your future, that's for <laughs> sure. Here's Johnson on for the punt. Gets it away. Kicking it away from Rico, takes a Mesa Verde bounce. Rico jumps over it dangerously, and it's going to be down inside the 15-yard line. We do have a flag in the backfield, though. I think they are going to get Dixon for running into the punter. So, If it's a personal foul, and it is, that's going to be a first down. Now, right now, Johnson not too happy about that news because he is down on the field. But that should be an automatic first down. Well, let's see if they're going to give it to him. It's certainly the 15 yards. Yeah, I'm pretty it's sure it's going to be short of a first, but on the personal foul, that should be an automatic. Yeah, I agree. It should be an automatic, and if it is going to be the automatic first down, which uh, looks like he is pointing, that is going to be a good break for the Mesa Verde Mavericks here. Despite an injury to their kicker, um, that will give them the first down. So it's exactly what they needed. Uh, they had third in the acre, and they ended up getting it on a penalty. Nonetheless, if it does bring up a first down, hopefully they can take advantage of this and put some points on the board. Well, Johnson is walking, which is a good sign. Not only is he their punter and kicker, but he's been playing well along the defensive line. And with Roberts already out, a key component offensively, Mesa Verde can't afford to lose too many more key players. So Johnson's out at the moment, but the Mavericks offense still lives here, or are they? Let's see. Still says fourth down on the yard marker on the far side. So it, and it will an main fourth down. All right. So instead of fourth and 23 or 24, it's now fourth down and nine. Johnson has to sit out of play. So now Worthington on. And you've got to think, well, maybe you just go for it here. I mean, yeah, it definitely looks like it. They're sending much their more offense makeable. out there. Yeah, I fourth, mean, why not? Yeah, fourth and nine is definitely more doable than uh, fourth and 23. So, like I said prior to that last play, had they picked up some yards, they were probably going to go to it on fourth down. Uh, nonetheless, they weren't able to do it on the offensive side, but they got it on the penalty yardage. So, 
going for it here on fourth and nine are the Mavericks. Worthington's going to sprint out left. He had three receivers there. Here comes the pressure. Worthington dodges him. He's going to throw, and he just overthrows his receiver. Great job avoiding the rush, but a turnover on downs, and the Mavericks drive stalls, albeit in Dixon territory, but the Rams take over first down and 10. Yeah, I want to point out the play by number 44, Corey Hall there. He was able to get in the backfield. Great penetration, was not touched by any of the offensive line. He flushed the quarterback to the outside and made the quarterback make that throw on the run. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's what led to the quarterback th overthrowing his wide receiver. So nonetheless, good play by Corey Hall on defense on a big fourth and nine. Ball at the Dixon 40. On first down, Rico end around with Hall, the lead blocker. Rico is going to be brought down. Nice tackle on the open field by Mesa Verde's Danny Tobolsky, one of the captains on this team. Excuse me, Donnie Tobolsky. A gain of nine yards, however, and it'll bring up a second. Oh, actually, no, they're going to say 10 yards in the gain. First down. That's a big lead blocker at number 44, Corey Hall. You could tell the, the defensive back was not excited to see such a big boy <laughs> leading that ball carrier. I think that was Hector Vargas who saw his life flash in front of his face, except that was just Hall with a lead block. Here's Bonovich up the middle. He's going to get 10 more yards, Bonovich. plus a little bit more. Another first down for the Rams. 5.40 showing on the clock. Third quarter of play, still 26-7. to Dixon well in control. Yeah, coming into this game, it uh, looks like Corey Hall has seen a, a, a lot of the, the touches on the ball. But today, we've seen a lot from Bonovich, and he's been constantly moving the ball and doing well at it. Here's Hall now with a carry. Breaks a tackle, drags another guy, and takes it eight yards. And we've got a penalty marker down as well. And we've had very few of these. Most of them have been against Dixon in the game. It's been a fairly clean game. This one is going to be a hold against the Rams. But the penalties really haven't hurt Dixon too much. They've had a couple of personal fouls, a couple of holding penalties. Really, the biggest penalty is one of the few against Mesa Verde was that offside call that led to the fourth touchdown of the game for Dixon in the first quarter. Clock stops with 5.26 left as the officials are sorting out where this ball is going to be spotted. Mesa Verde's moving backwards. I'm not quite sure why that is. The indication was against Dixon, unless I... Yeah, I think they're calling a personal foul on Mesa Verde. And seeing as we have uh, number 55 for Mesa Verde over here throwing his helmet and being quite upset, I'm going to say it's on him. It'd be <laughs> Donnie Tobolsky. So, obviously, uh, Donnie is a little upset with himself. Nonetheless, the ball is moving 15 yards in the direction for the Rams. So, that's going to bring the Rams 15 yards closer to pay dirt here with... Five minutes, 26 seconds to go in the third quarter with the Rams leading 26 to 7 over the Mesa Verde Mavericks. You know, Jason, I missed that. Did that come after the holding call or did I miss the holding call completely? Uh, I've seen holding as well. And then nonetheless, I heard uh, the announcer announce a personal foul. So I'm with you on that one. I that missed might have it. been a dead ball penalty. Here's a handoff left side. Big running room and finally tackled inside the five yard line goes Bonovich. And Dixon knocking on the door once again. First down and goal. The ball at the five-yard line. The Rams offensive line smelling blood runs up to the line of scrimmage. Not a good sign if you're the defense. Here is a handoff. Hall runs over a guy, dies for the end zone, and will be stopped at the one. So second down and goal. But Dixon right on the doorstep right now. This is a big, big goal line stance for Mesa Verde. Here is Bonovich. He is going to walk in for his third score of the game, this time from a yard out. And Dixon solidifying their lead here. It's the first score of the second half. And it's 32-7. Seems to be a little bit of extracurricular activity going on after the plays are done here. Some of the kids getting a little bit hot-headed. Nonetheless, showing exactly how much heart it takes to play this game. So, A lot of frustration on the part of Mesa Verde is 
Here's the extra point try, a line drive good. It is 33 to seven, Dixon with the lead. And they are controlling the action here at MacArthur Field on the campus of San Juan High School. You're following the action on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Play on Sports is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. Playonsports.com. High school sports lives here. Also, don't forget to stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Dixon set to kick off and injuries have mounted. Frustration is mounted for Mesa Verde. Meanwhile, Dixon's running game, they are going to be quite a force when it comes to the playoffs. They are tough to stop. And Nolan Williams provides just enough of a passing threat and with his feet that you've got to stay a little bit balanced defensively if you're going to face these Dixon Rams. Sure, there's there's three guys you got to control in the running game, but if Dixon were to get down, they could get back in this game through the air, certainly. As Riley's going to kick this one, it's going to be... A dribbler on the ground and falling on the football at the 26-yard line will be Mesa Verde, and so that's where the Mavericks will take over with 434 remaining third quarter. It's starting to look like, Jeff, that Mesa Verde is starting to shut down a little bit. They need something to bring back up their, mo their morale. They need a big play from their offense, I'd say, is what exactly what they need. They really, really would like to see some points on the board getting that early touchdown in the early first half. They have just been quiet on offset offense since then. They had a nice drive the last time, but it stalled on a fourth and nine. Here is a handoff. Garcia looking for running room, and there is just Garcia. nothing there. Right there making the tackle is Hall. A loss of three yards. There just hasn't been many, there haven't been many holes in the offensive line since that touchdown drive by Mesa Verde, and plus with Roberts out of the game and unable to soften up the interior, that's not giving Garcia and Hanson much room on the outside because Dixon could just pin their ears back and go after those tailbacks. Second down after a loss of four. Back to pass Worthington. He's got single coverage near side and can't quite connect with his receiver. Brent Fatigato on the near sideline. That went just a little bit out of his reach. That was a nice route, though, by Fatigato. He was able to make a nice post to the outside. Uh, his quarterback just led him a little bit too far, but still a very nice route ran by Fatigato. 3.54 left, third quarter. 33-7. to seven. Dixon leading, three receivers to the far side. Pistol formation for Worthington, went back in the backfield. The snap. Worthington looking, looking, looking all day. Now here comes the pressure. Worthington running, throwing, pass complete across the original line of scrimmage. Gain of about seven, but it'll bring up fourth down and seven. And the punting unit will come on, and we'll see if we see Johnson back in the game. No, I see him on the bench right now. He's not coming in, so we'll see who's going to be doing the kicking now for Mesa Verde. See, is that Garcia who's out there? It looks like it. It looks like 88. Yeah, not Christian Garcia, but our other aforementioned Garcia, who we didn't have on our roster today, unfortunately. But he gets a nice kick away, and it's going to be returnable. This is Riley from his 40, out to midfield and into Mesa Verde territory. And Dixon will have the ball again with under three minutes remaining in the third quarter, leading at 33 to seven. The Rams comfortably in front and depending on what happens with Capital Christian tonight if Capital Christian were to lose there would be a tie for first place but Dixon fell to Capital Christian during league play so the benefit of the tiebreaker would fall Capital Christian's way it was Edgar Garcia with the kicking normally wears number 80 tonight 88 and now we've got a penalty marker we may have too many men on the field for Mesa Verde Two, three, six, nine, 12. 
So right now, facing the running game that Dixon's employing, I wouldn't mind throwing an extra player out there to help out. No, I agree. And uh, that's uh, number 12, Chris Worthy-Reed, who was a little bit late to get off the field there. Yeah, and you wonder if it was where the breakdown was, but you've got new players coming into play spots that are normally filled by Alex Johnson, by Jess Roberts, and kids getting pressed into service in spots where they might not normally be. Here's a handoff, Bonovich running left. Once again, nobody's touching this kid. He's Mr. Elusive, and he's finally tackled around the 25-yard line, and now we've got extracurricular stuff after the play is over. A little bit of a scuffle. Ray Villa didn't like the end of that play. Yeah, he got hit behind uh, by a late, late block in the back. It was very unnecessary by Dixon. Nonetheless, what he did was very unnecessary as well. But uh, still, a little bit of extracurricular activity. Like we said, uh, frustration starting to get a little high there for Mesa Verde. Certainly is. I think Villa came off and his helmet was turned sideways. He, he got hit pretty hard from behind there after the, after the fact. Uh, the, the whistle had already been blown, and he got a late hit in the back on a block, so he was pretty upset about that. Well, a penalty marker was thrown, but I didn't see if it was thrown for the late hit in the back or... No, I think it was the extracurricular when Villa jumped up. Pretty sure they're going to get him on that. Well, now our officials are having a conference, and they're going to sort this out because we've seen a couple of incidences now where the game could teeter on the edge of getting away from... Mesa Verde a bit. They're already trailing 33-7. And now the coach is wisely getting the team together and probably talking about staying disciplined and staying focused. Yeah, I agree. Despite the fact that you're down, you guys are still a big group of gentlemen. You need to be proving your professionalism. You're out there representing your school, so you definitely want to keep your hot heads down and uh, keep it a little bit cool. Well, we'll see what our officials do here. I have a feeling they'll talk to both coaching staffs. We've got a personal foul against Dixon. That's, That's the only indication so far. So maybe they are going to call the block in the back as it led to the extracurricular activity. The coach from Dixon does not look very happy about that call. Coach uh, Besagani, I think if I'm pronouncing that right. Besagini. Besagini. Forgive me, Wes Besagini, for mispronouncing your name. Well, there's a long conversation taking place as we're getting this sorted out. So I think the officials are saying that the reaction by Via stemmed from the late block in the back by Dixon. And I didn't catch which one of the Rams came flying in at the end of the play. No, I definitely didn't see it either. I, I was just paying attention to Via getting up, and he happened to get laid right back down. So nonetheless, a little bit of extracurricular activity. These kids getting a little hot-headed with the playoffs on the line. Well, so. and you don't want to get yourself ejected in a game like this, especially if you're Dixon, because then that has to get appealed through the section headquarters. You may have to sit out a game. Yeah, I agree. And you don't want to be doing that in the first round of the playoffs, which start next week. And you could find out who's going to be playing against whom in Divisions 1 through 6 tomorrow at 4 o'clock on PlayOnSports.com as we have the playoff preview show live from CIF Sac Joaquin section Headquarters in Lodi, California. Joey Gonzalez and I will be there hosting our first ever playoff preview show. And Will McCombs, who's producing for us today, will be producing tomorrow as well. Tim King, providing the video today, will be doing that also. We're bringing everybody in on this one. Dixon gets the ball, first down. Hand off Bonovich. This is always a good idea. Running right. He's going to make that all up plus. He's going to get the first down and more, and he's going to be finally driven out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Nick Bonovich can make a lot of mistakes, go away in a hurry. Yeah, that uh, eliminated the 15 plus the 10 they needed for the original first down. What a play by Bonovich to gain so, so many yards, putting him in the red zone for a first and goal. The ball at the nine-yard line, and credit the offensive line. Bonovich is finding huge holes to run through. He's already got three touchdowns in the game. Play action. Williams is going to tuck it away and run on a bootleg. He's going for the end zone. we got a penalty marker down. Williams is in the end zone, but hold everything. 
despite what this penalty is, I want to point out that the Williams, or uh, Nolan Williams being the quarterback, still bringing his head down, gaining those extra yards needed. It is going to be a holding on the Rams, but still a great play by Williams to put his head down and try to get across that end zone. I like to see that out of your quarterback, constantly trying to keep his feet moving and the ball going forward. 2.17 left, third quarter. The officials are going to bring the ball back to the 20-yard line, where it will again be first and goal. So the penalty's mounting up here for Dixon, who is comfortably in front by 26 points. Out to the near side goes Baptiste. He might have been the one who got flagged for the hold on the edge there. Hall the lone back of the backfield. Bonovich goes in motion left to right. Play action. Williams running the option. He's going to option to keep it. He's going to head up field, and he's going to get knocked down outside the 10-yard line. Second down and goal. That was a very nice tackle by Jesse Albright Rodriguez there. Uh, Williams looked like he was going to be moving it again. And he broke a couple tackles, and uh, Albright Rodriguez happened to run across there and take the ball carry down. Very nice play by Rodriguez. The ball at the 12-yard line. Here's Williams rolling out, looking in the end zone. He's got a man open. Baptiste again, and knocked away at the final moment. Great defensive play. That was a very nice play by Hector Vargas for Mesa Verde. He, he timed that perfectly, met the ball carrier and the ball at the same time, took him down, and was uh, able to deflect or to stop that receiver from bringing in that ball in for a nice touchdown. That was a very nice fade pass thrown by Williams. I want to point that out. Very nice fade. He's thrown a couple of nice fades in the end zone, has Williams throughout this game. Baptiste was open, but Vargas gets a hand in there at the final moment. Now Bonovich in motion, play action to Bono. The handoff goes to Bonovich. He's going to cut up field. Boy, that kid's got quick feet. Stop short of the end zone, where it'll bring up fourth down. A minute 12 and counting third quarter. The ball at the one-yard line, and I would think Dixon would be going for it here. Yeah. Now under a minute to play in the third. With that whole lot of back that we were talking about in the first half. Oh, yeah. With Bonovich, Rico, and Hall, I would definitely go for it on the one as well. Hall's in the backfield. Rico to the right. And Williams is going to keep it himself. And he finds a hole. And he's got a one-yard plunge for a score. Dixon has another one-yard run here in the quarter. This time, Williams gets in for the first time in the game. And the Rams extend their lead. It's now 39-7. to The extra point try coming up here for Dixon. That's Kyle Riley. It's definitely starting to get away from Mesa Verde now. Williams the holder. And now jumping into the neutral zone and is Mesa Verde. Trying to anticipate a block kick. I believe that was Alvarez who jumped in there and so now instead of a extra point, we got a yard and a half closer. And Riley will step up. He's looking now at about an 18 yarder as opposed to a 20. Well, Dixon has done an outstanding job. They have won the battle, Jason, at the line of scrimmage in this game. As this one's going to be muffed, Williams can't quite come up with a snap and the extra point, no good. If there's been one blemish, for Dixon that they're going to need to work on going into the playoffs is they've had one extra point that was missed, a two-point conversion that failed, and then a missed extra point there that really didn't even get off the ground. And as you face better and better teams, you can't be leaving those types of points out on the field. Yeah, I agree. I covered a game last week. Uh, we covered Vacaville versus Rodriguez. And uh, at the, after the game, the coaches were talking to the players for Vacaville. And one thing he pointed out is they had not missed an extra point all year long. So definitely something that the high school teams like to focus on is kicking those extra points because those one points do start to add up uh, if you start missing a few of them. Well, and I can tell you that uh, head coach Chris Richardson over at Folsom would be is painfully aware of the difference an extra point can make is in a very spectacular playoff game just a few years ago that we covered here in the Sac Joaquin section when we were under the website kbcsports.com. Folsom had a fourth quarter lead that they let get away and then an extra point to try to tie the game late was blocked. 
And Folsom ended up not advancing. Of course, the next year they won the state title, so all ended well for the Bulldogs, and they're having another great season this year as well. But Chris talked about, I remember talking to him at the state tournament about how, yep, those extra points make a huge difference over the course of a year, and we certainly learned that lesson last year. And now we got another penalty marker late at the end of the play on the return. Looked like there might have been inadvertent contact where one of the Rams just ended up running into one of the Mesa Verde players who's trying to gain his balance at the end of the play, but I think the officials are sensitive now to any extra contact, and that one's going to go against the Rams and will improve Mesa Verde's field position on this next drive. 42 seconds left, third quarter, and the Mavericks trail 39-7. to It looked like just a simple holding penalty on the, the Rams for that last call. Still, I like that the uh, referees are trying to keep order in this game, throwing the flags early now, not letting any of these kids get a little bit out of hand. So good good play by the refs. Uh, we have a timeout called by the Dixon Rams. And we'll take a quick timeout as well right here on your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com, 39-7, Dixon leading here in the third quarter. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all of their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. It's a great opportunity. Jason, I don't know about you, but if I'd had this at the high school level, oh yeah, when I was going to school, I would have been all over it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I anytime I can go uh, put on a headset and talk about sports for a class, <laughs> I'm going to sign up for that one right away. Yeah, can I take that for periods one through six? Yeah, please. <laughs> I, I would love to show up and do nothing but that. That is a great opportunity and an immediately transferable skills, folks, after you graduate from high school. Uh, split backfield for Worthington. He's going to drop back to pass, looking to his left, gets the ball away but underthrown. Nice pressure by the Rams who do not sport a deep roster. In fact, coming into the game, 33 players on the roster, and we were told, yep, this guy's hurt, this guy's hurt, these two aren't here, this one's hurt as well, and they were uh, dropping from 33 down to quite less than that, but as Ron Barney, the head coach for Mesa Verde, told me before the game, he said, well, you know, all that really matters is the 11 on the field, not how many you have on the roster. Here's a toss sweep left side, Garcia. Garcia... After the incompletion on first down, gets six yards. A nice carry for him. And he'll bring up third down and four. Garcia just a junior, so he'll be returning next year. And he has been very, very good. Yeah, very good. That's for the Mavericks this year. Very good might even very be the most understatement of all. <laughs> when you can rack up over 1,000 yards in high school with uh, eight touchdowns, that's always a good, good season. And not playing a full 10 games, coming off an injury. Now running to the near side. He's going to get the first down, hard running. Nice tackle on the play by Joe Quintanilla. But not before Garcia gets the first down and the quarter comes to a close. We're in our final 12 minutes of the regular season. Here in the Sac Joaquin section, hard to believe. But this is the final quarter of the regular season coming up. And right now, Dixon comfortably in front, 39-7 over the Mesa Verde Mavericks. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access th uh, thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. That's right, folks. If you sign up and subscribe on YouTube, become a fan on Facebook, catch our feed on Twitter, you too can be the person who starts a viral video. You know you're always getting those at the end of those things, Jason. You're always, we're always finding out last. Why not be the first, folks? And you get those subscriptions, send it out to your friends. Why don't you start the chain? Yeah, speaking of viral videos, I think a couple weeks ago, the video that's going all over YouTube is the kid from Spokane, Washington, who kicked a, uh, what was it, a 73 or uh, some, something ridiculous. For the win. Yeah, with, uh, it was actually, it tied the game. Or tied the game, overtime, excuse me, yeah. And they went back to win it in overtime, so a huge kick. Here's Garcia on first down. He's going to get three yards. Second down and seven coming up. Yeah, it's really been an incredible year of plays. 
and they're only going to ratchet up in intensity as we move into the playoffs. And not just for football, but the other sports we're covering as well. Soccer, water polo, we've got cross country, golf, and tennis highlights coming your way in all the different sections we're, we're participating in here in California, especially in the SAC Joaquin. Girls volleyball coverage, lots and lots of action between now and the end of the year. Garcia around the right-hand side. Stays on his feet. Nice job bouncing out of a pile. Broke a tackle and gets about three or four more yards. Yeah, back to the playoff action. I'm definitely excited to uh, get this playoff going. Uh, a lot of good teams coming out of the Sac Joaquin section. Uh, I have family who live in the uh, Merced Atwater area, so I'm a little bit interested to see how Buhat Colony and Merced High School do coming into playoffs. So both looking good coming out of that area. We've got a block in the back against Mesa Verde. As the clock continues to move, 10.45 and counting, fourth quarter. And Mesa Verde trying to mount a scoring drive to end the season on a positive note. Right now trailing 39-7. to Worthington under center. Back to pass, sets up, looking left, pocket collapses, down he goes. Boy, those long pass routes against this defensive line right now are just not there. The receiver streaking down the field, didn't even have enough time to complete their route. Worthington's got about three seconds before he is swarmed. Yeah, the uh, the part about that whole statement that's uh, extremely scary is the fact that the Dixon Rams have their second team defensive line out there. And they're still able to, to collapse the pocket so nicely and bring down the quarterback and bring up a big third and 19 here for the Mavericks. Worthington, toss sweep, left side. Garcia is going to bounce to the outside, gets a nice block, cuts up field, and will be driven out of bounds near the original line of scrimmage. But that will bring up fourth down. And the punting unit on once again for the Mavericks. And that is a phrase that you don't want to hear too often if you're a fan of your team. But that has been the case for the Mavericks tonight. Dixon's defense has been outstanding to say the least. Definitely been uh, just all over the run coming into this game, seeing the rushing yards for Christian Garcia. Um, I'm expecting Mesa Verde to just, just go off on the run. But uh, the Dixon Rams have just been constantly stopping the ball. Edgar Garcia on to punt in replace of the injured Johnson. That snap takes a couple of hops. Garcia wisely gets it away as quickly as he can. Then it takes a Dixon bounce and will roll dead at the 42-yard line. But really all Garcia could do, that ball came to him on a couple of hops, and he was fortunate to get that kickoff. Yeah, it looked like the center was a little bit more interested in running down the field and trying to tackle where the ball was going than getting the ball to his punter. Nonetheless, he was able to get the ball off on a, fair, uh, a fairly good punt despite the snap. So uh, giving the ball to the Rams on about the 43-yard line. Jason, this is your first look at Dixon this year. What are your impressions? Uh, definitely exactly what I expected coming into this game. A lot of rushing. Uh, they have a, just a solid rushing tandem with uh, Bonovich, uh, Rico, and Hall. And this is Hall right here. Hall's in the secondary. Hall breaks a tackle and will be down around the 43-yard line of Mesa Verde. And I think now, if you're Dixon, maybe you get some of those bigger skill players out of there. You don't want to get an injury going into the first round of the playoffs when you're up by 32 points, 9-10 left in the game. Yeah, I agree here. you definitely up so many points. Definitely don't think you can come back and lose this game. So it's time to start getting a couple other kids in there, especially being the last couple games for some of these seniors. Get a couple seniors in there and get them a couple touches. Rico gets a couple of yards, maybe three, on first down. I am noticing a, a few extra subs here for the Rams, so they are starting to get a couple of their extra kids in there, get them a few touches here late in the game. Eight minutes, 40 seconds to go in this ball game. You can tell the cleaner jerseys are now in the game, <laughs> especially on this grass field. Handoff left side, Hall. Hall will be spun down. After a yard to the 40-yard line, third down coming up, third and seven. After a gain of one, third and seven. 
Alfred Martinez checking into the game for the first time for Mesa Verde. And now coming out is Jacob Martin in motion. Handoff left side, Riley. Riley hops over one tackler, dives forward. He'll be short of a first down. Fourth down and four. Inside the 40-yard line and... Again, Dixon in in-between territory, but more points not required right now. It's Andrew just a function Martin. of winding down the clock if you're the Rams. It is fourth and four. Ball spotted at the Maverick 42-yard line. Rico and Hall in the backfield. Williams up to the line. He's going to go for it. Tight formation, strong side right. Williams play action. He's going to pass. He's going to roll out. He's going to throw. He's got a man open, but throws incomplete. Overthrows his receiver, and Mesa Verde holds. And the Mavericks will take over with 7-14 remaining in the game, trailing 39-7. to They'll have the ball inside their own 40-yard line. Yeah, hopefully we can go down and get some of these points here to get some of these kids a little bit of uh, something to go home happy about. A lot of them, I can see their heads are down. They are starting to realize that their playoff hopes might be slipping away with seven minutes, 15 seconds to go in their, their uh, some of these kids, their high school careers. So uh, definitely starting to see the frustration for the Mavericks. Hopefully we can get some of these, uh, some of these points back. First and 10 Mavs. Offset eye left. Handoff, Garcia, who's gonna see playing time again next year down the sideline and Nice tackle by Riley in the secondary, but Garcia, double-digit gain. And the ball is in Dixon territory at the Rams' 45-yard line. Yeah, Garcia is looking good here towards the end of this game. He's got a couple good runs. Definitely something to look forward to for the Mavericks for next year is uh, seeing if he can't repeat for another 1,000-yard rushing season. So. Yeah, that is something to hang your hat on if you're Christian Garcia. He's going to get the handoff again, running right. And he'll get a couple of yards on that carry. On the right side, a gain of two. Well, it's good to see, you know, one of the questions that Coach Barney had before the game was, well, how much is Garcia going to play? And he said, well, we're going to test it out behind the locker room. And barring something crazy, he'll get playing time. But then it'll be a question of how much. And Garcia getting a lot of playing time late. He obviously feels good. And it's nice to see him bouncing back at the end of the year. And Tyler Hansen doing a nice job replacing Garcia. Last game and a little bit tonight. As this one is a nice tackle, fill in the hole right there, John Eldridge. But then strength by Garcia, who is carrying Eldridge, who goes 235 right on his back. Yeah, that's a piggyback ride right there. That's like uh, when uh, when I was in high school and I had my walked in on my cousins and he's got three of his brothers and sisters all on his back doing push-ups. That's what that <laughs> reminded me of right there. World's Strongest Man competition. Patterson household style right there. <laughs> no gain on that last play. Worthington's got all kinds of time. Most he's had all day. Throws a nice ball down the field, but incomplete. Overthrows Garcia. But that's a good looking pass. You can tell Worthington's got an arm with a little bit more protection. Perhaps a different story today, but instead, incomplete. Fourth down and. The punting unit on once again for Mesa Verde. Yeah, that's one thing you had pointed out before this game that the coach had said if their offensive line could hold, that Mesa Verde would be okay. That is one thing that we have noticed that the defensive line for the Rams and the, the entire defense, I should say, has just been constantly getting through that offensive line, uh, constant penetration for the defense, and it has led to only seven points for the Mavericks. So uh, even the coach knew at the, before this game they needed their offensive line to perform, and unfortunately they were not able to do that here tonight. Here's a snap, a couple of dribbles. Johnson back in, muffs the snap, and he's going to be tackled. Unfortunate there. Really not his fault. I say Johnson muffs the snap, but the ball took about three hops before it got to him, and even Derek Jeter would have had trouble fielding that ground ball, and instead the ball turned over to Dixon in Mesa Verde territory at the Mavericks 35-yard line. 4-17 and counting here in the fourth. So the Rams take over. Still with all their uh, first team offense out there. It's a yeah. little bit surprising. Williams still in the game. Hall to his right. Man in motion, Bonovich. Now everybody's in motion. It's like Canadian Football League play out there. We got penalty markers down. You 
Can't send three people out there, and we're playing four downs, not three. And so that'll be a penalty against the Rams. I liked it, though. Either Canadian football or arena. We had all kinds of guys in motion there. Yeah, I like that arena league where they can get the one guy in motion. But nonetheless, we are uh, outside here playing <laughs> high school football, so that's not going to work with multiple men in motion. So we're going to get a penalty on the Rams. Take it back a little bit. Keeping that clock moving, though, three minutes, 25 seconds to go in the game and in uh, the regular season for the Sac Joaquin section. Williams shotgun, play action, drops back to pass, rolling left, throwing and underthrows the receiver. That was Rico on the far sideline. We have a running clock here towards the end of the game with a score 39 to seven, Dixon leading and now under the three minute mark. Folks, stay tuned for the playonsports.com post game show. We hope to have an interview with our player of the game from the victorious Dixon Rams. Jason and I will go off air briefly at the end of this one. Do a quick vote, and then Jason will head down to the field and see if he can corral our player of the game. So stay tuned for that in the post game, folks, right here on PlayOnSports.com. 2.35 left. Williams, the snap, handoff, right side. This is Riley. Riley weaves his way down the field. Nice blocking downfield by the wide receiver, Baptiste, who's had a touchdown catch in this game. Tackle by Cox, and uh, with 2.18 left, it is a third down situation for Dixon. Yeah, not only good blocking on that play, but good ball carrier. Uh, he was able to run, follow his blockers nicely. That was a nice play by Riley, uh, following his blockers exactly the way they teach you to run the ball. In motion, Rico, who will get the handoff with a lead blocker in front of him, a Rico around the outside, and he's going to be spun down after getting the first down with under a minute 50 to play. Corey Hall once again leading the way, and when those two get ahead of steam around the left-hand side, I think it registers on the Richter scale. Yeah, I definitely agree with that one. That is a big boy out there, number 44, Corey Hall. So a minute, 23 seconds to go in this regular season. 15 yard line is where Dixon is. The Mesa Verde 15. First down and 10 and the Rams are taking as much time as they can here. Really all they need to do is take a knee and that's exactly what Williams is gonna do. And they will run out the clock. We'll probably have to do that one more time in this game and then we'll be able to call it right here. Dixon's gonna finish the year nine and one Four and one in league play. Meanwhile, Mesa Verde will finish up the year three and seven, two and three in league play, and we'll await to see what their playoff fate is tomorrow, and they can find that out beginning at four o'clock on the Sac Joaquin section playoff preview show right here on PlayOnSports.com. Hope you'll join us for that as Williams will take the snap, take another knee, and that will wind it down. 25 seconds left in the game, folks, but Dixon is going to win this one 39-7 and turn their attention to the playoffs beginning next week. PlayOnSports.com postgame show coming up in just a few moments. Again, we hope to have an interview with our player of the game from the victorious Dixon Rams. That'll do it. It's now official. Clock hits 0, 39-7. Your final score. We're your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. Post game show coming up right after this. Please stay with us. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP.
can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Jeff Kurtz here on PlayOnSports.com, joined by our player of the game, Nick Bonovich of the victorious Dixon Rams. Three touchdowns rushing tonight, a 39-7 win over Mesa Verde, and now really well set up for the playoffs. Congratulations on Thank the you. big win this evening. Three yeah. touchdowns for you. <laughs> It's a fantastic game for you guys. What was the difference in the game in your mind? Because it really seemed like you were able to get down the field 10, 15 yards before you even touched. It seemed like the offensive line was doing a really great job. Yeah, in the beginning, they um, they, they, had, they knew what they were doing, and they, they got their blocks right. The field was a little, little messy, a little wet, but um, we got it done. In the second half and later in the uh, first, first half, we had a little trouble you know, getting our blocks right, but in the beginning, we were doing pretty well. You know, you guys really have a tough offense to defend. Mm -hmm. Hall, you, Rico, Nolan Williams can throw the ball. Baptiste looks like he's pretty good and you know, getting open and catching passes as well. If you were playing defense against your team, how would you stop you guys? Who do you need <laughs> to key on in order to make this happen, or is it just too many weapons? Uh, I don't know. I'm really not sure. I mean, we got, like you said, we have all those players. We have a great team this year. Um, well, Dixon played rugby we have, we won the national championship and ha like more than half the players on this team have played on that national championship team and um we just know how to win so and so you're so really the carrying over from last spring's rugby championship to this year's football team is it the mentality because certainly some of the skills are the same but obviously the games are very distinct yeah. so is it just the mentality that's carried think, over yeah i think so yeah and how does this team stack up against last year's football team um I think last year we, I mean, this year we have a lot more talent. We have way more talent this year. Um, last year was we we um, went five and zero in in league. Um, we did pretty well, but I think yeah, it's just a little bit more talent this year. Do you feel you guys feel more confident now going into the playoffs at this point this year than at the same point last season? Despite the fact you were undefeated in the league last year and this year you have one loss. I feel yeah, I feel like we can we can beat the, at least the first round. What are what is the key for a successful playoff run for Dixon in your mind? Um, just the right mentality in your head. You know, you just got to know you have to win. And um, once you get that in, then you're almost unstoppable. Well, you can hear the determination in this young man. Three touchdowns today, a lot of determination to get in the end zone three times, plus a national championship in rugby and now hopefully a section championship in football. Good luck. Nick right. Bonovich, our Thank you. Play on sports.com player of the game. We'll be back wrapping up here on the post game in just a few moments. Please stay with us. 
We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. A Wiley Ballard uh, graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Jeff Kurtz rejoined by my broadcast partner, Jason Patterson, here in the press box at San Juan High School, MacArthur Field, as Dixon wins 39-7 over Mesa Verde tonight. Jason, it was an interesting game early in that Mesa Verde was able to bounce back after Dixon scored first, after a Mesa Verde turnover. It looked like it might be a more balanced game. Mesa Verde was getting going offensively. Dixon's defense shut that down, and their offensive line really controlled the line of scrimmage when the Rams had the football. Yeah, the the Rams did exactly what they needed to do. They uh, they gave up one touchdown, and that was it the entire game. It was in the first quarter. Um, it was right after Mesa Verde gave up the turnover, and the Rams got that quick touchdown. And then uh, Mesa Verde came back, got their one touchdown, and that was it. The Rams seen what they were going to do. They had that one great drive. They pretty much learned from that drive and found a way to stop them and continue to stop them throughout the entire game, and it proves with a with a victory for Dixon Rams. Dixon, so many weapons, certainly well poised for a big playoff push. And our player of the game, Nick Bonovich, saying, even though last year we were undefeated in the league, he feels that they have more confidence this year despite the one loss. Yeah, he definitely had a whole lot of confidence in him. I like when we bring players up here for the player of the game interview, and they've got a lot of confidence. Uh, he wasn't in here you know, with his head down saying um, he was ready to go. He, they look ready for the playoffs. I would definitely be watching out for the Dixon Rams come playoff time. Well, we will find out where Dixon lands in the playoffs tomorrow at 4 p.m. on the Sac Joaquin, Joaquin Section Playoff Preview Show live from Sac Joaquin Section Headquarters in Lodi, California. We'll be there. I'll be there. 4 o'clock. Find out where everyone's going to be in the playoffs in the Sac Joaquin Section. Playoffs start next week, November 9th for football. We'll have live coverage for you for that as well. I'd like to thank everyone here on our broadcast team who made today's broadcast possible. The man behind the camera, Timothy King today. Will McCombs, our producer for my broadcast partner, Jason Patterson. I'm Jeff Kurtz saying so long from San Juan High School where Dixon closes out the regular season 9-1 and with a 39-7 to win over Mesa Verde. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon, folks. Good night. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One shot at this.